Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome to today's MSI Insider a live stream. I'm Ja, and I have me here with me today. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome everyone. everybody. So, how is everyone doing? We have a lot to talk about today, and uh, also some special content, so there's a lot to look forward to. Um, yeah, uh, Michiel, how's it going, man? <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. We have quite a, uh, let's say, a, um, a unique topic today, huh? Because there's something on the table that you usually never see on our live stream. <laughs> No, I, guess I, you guys I, I, still, I still have to get used to this. Yeah, you mean, you mean this, this uh, nice little black box right here? Uh, yeah, what is that kind of black box? <laughs> so it's like an ITX case? <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. So it's, it's uh, of course, the uh, Xbox Series X. But uh, yeah, guys, um, we have uh, quite a topic for you today. Uh, but before that, let me just uh, briefly tell you guys that, like, usually we have a giveaway. So for today, we have Xbox Game Passes to give away. So. We have uh, quite a few to uh, give away throughout today's live stream. Uh, so if you go to msi.com slash two slash insider, uh, the more actions you perform, you know, you know the thrill. So uh, the more actions, the more chances you will have at winning one of the codes. Um, so as we have several to give away today, if you didn't win on the first few tries, don't worry, you're still in the, uh, in the same drawing pool. Um, so best of luck to you guys. And uh, if this link doesn't work for you, don't worry. Um, if you're watching on our YouTube or Twitch channel, uh, just uh, check out the chat because there we also drop the link, a direct link to the giveaway uh, as well that you can uh, make use of. Um, uh, all right, so guys, good luck. I hope you uh, participate and uh, may the luck be with you. So what are we gonna do today? Uh, on the table, you can already see we have quite some uh, parts and hardware laying around uh this one i already introduced from uh the xbox uh team i think this is the first time we have a console in our live yep, stream yep we uh i think in all those years that we have been uh live streaming this is the first time indeed so guys really you're witnessing some uh, history changing <laughs> times right here <laughs> I, um, i'm waiting for yep. all the discussions in chat <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and furthermore of course later i will set up uh this magnificent uh, magnificent little beast of a monitor and uh, little beast we'll, yeah it's it's a uh, <laughs> sarcastic it's a lot uh, but it's not little <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's everything except little but of course i'll set it up and show you guys what it can do and why it's uh, certified for xbox later of course we'll also play around with uh, the xbox series x as well as uh, you know some 4k gaming experience to show you guys uh, you know the performance that's needed uh, with dying light and uh, halo infinite and um yeah very good question in chat already. the prizes for today how long are they the game passes <laughs> it's a it's a, a month's trial so uh yeah there's gonna be plenty of hours for you guys to uh, fill the month with and um yeah <laughs> i hope you enjoy it but we are going to uh, start the, tr uh, the stream today with a very special guest. We were very lucky to ha actually have him on board. Uh, we have an expert, his, J his name is James uh, van Rosmalen. And uh, he is from the Xbox team, he's a product lead, and he is going to be with us today. So you guys, if you have anything that you want to ask a real expert, uh, that's you know uh, a veteran in the field, this is your chance. And um, let's welcome uh, James to the stream hello james good morning guys good morning or, good morning Good morning, where i'm at good afternoon where you're at so what time is it for you james uh it's 706 a.m here in uh, seattle so did you already have your morning coffee i did uh i did <laughs> well yeah i had one last night well this is seattle so i had one last night and i had one this morning so <laughs> so guys as you can see even in the gaming industry you know sometimes you have to work quite hard and uh 7 a.m you're already food on awake and in the live stream but uh yeah james really appreciate you uh joining us today and uh we hope uh, thanks for know, getting up for going us to a, <laughs> a good time yeah absolutely well i was gonna say thank you for i already see the pc master race comments thank you for <laughs> really? the, the pc gamers which i consider myself to be one as well for giving us uh console folks some time to chat <laughs> yeah, who knows, guys? After today, uh, you know, the PC Master Race is going to be less, uh, you know, abundant. <laughs> All right, okay. So, uh, James, and uh, just to start off with, uh, you know, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Like, what's your background, uh, so the audience get a better idea of you know who you are. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. I, so I've been at Microsoft. Uh, go, this is my thirteenth year. I started in twenty ten. Wow. 
um, all the way back on Xbox 360. So it's, it's been a while. I put a few consoles out there in the market. Um, <laughs> and I've worked on most of the subsystems inside the console. I worked on the optical disk drive. I worked on the hard drive. I worked on Wi-Fi for a while. Uh, I spent some time on the design for Surface team, and now I lead uh, qualification, which is testing all up for the design for Xbox team, which is our third party licensing business, which essentially means products for the Xbox um, ecosystem that are not made by Microsoft. So they're made by partners like MSI. So you get to play with all the third party goodies. Uh, that's, <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. So um, a lot of a lot of my work is doing gaming. I will say that. Um, but a lot of it is recognizing, is this going to be a good experience when it gets in the customer's hands? At the price point that this is, is the customer gonna gonna get what they're expecting out of it? Whether we're talking about a headset or a monitor or flight controls or whatever it is. That's uh, a lot of products to uh, to test. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, you really have to kind of know the ecosystem, and it's it's tough to stay ahead of it too. I mean, I'm sure the the PC crowd knows this. You and we were talking about this earlier. You can dive into mouse and keyboard for days and not even get to headsets and controllers and everything else. So a um, lot of areas you can dive in and be a nerd about when it comes to uh, accessories. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Um, but OK, so the, how did you actually get into, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft and the Xbox team? OK, good question. So uh, my background, believe it or not, is not in tech. Uh, my bachelor's degree is actually in English. I went to grad school for really? business. Um, yeah, I <laughs> wanted never to be, guessed. <laughs> I, I had a dream one time to be a college professor. Um, and then I ended up, you know, plans change, uh, things go different ways. I ended up working in aerospace. Um, and then just happenstance ended up performing well in front of the right person. That person went to Xbox and then said, Hey, I would love to have you on my team. And so I gave that a shot. And I mean, it was a match made in heaven, uh, getting to work in the gaming industry, which who, which gamer of us wouldn't want to do that? Uh, but then also being close to home, getting to work with hardware, which I love. Um, yeah, just got really, I don't want to say luck because I don't believe in luck, but really fortunate. <laughs> so. oh, well, I guess, you know, you worked hard enough for him to uh, to ask you along the way, right? So that's that's definitely something. But but did you actually start gaming after or before that? Oh, bef before. I've been a gamer since, so I, I'm dating myself here, but I grew up on Atari 2600. <laughs> Um, Anybody yeah, know I, who that is or what it is in the chat? <laughs> it's a it's, test. It's, the, it's a console that had wood paneling. Yeah, you'll definitely want to uh, do a web search on it and see what it looked like. But Nowadays, uh, you I pay mean, a hefty price premium if you want like a wooden panel on your <laughs> gaming console. <laughs> for real, retro gaming is more... I, I mean, retro gaming is more expensive than current gaming. Try to go <laughs> yeah, buy a used Game Boy Advance cartridge. It's more than an Xbox game. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I would say like I've been in, in when I was in college, we used to game on Sega Dreamcast and I I had an original Xbox back in in the two, early 2000s. Uh, so I've played almost every console that's come out in the last 25 years, I would say even the lesser known ones like TurboGrafx-16, um, but always passionate about the space. Taste change over the years, but um, gaming as a group has always really been the same. I mean, the hardware is dynamic, but yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Okay, man. We have guys. Uh, as you hear, you know, we have a real veteran right here. <laughs> oh, we have Cre uh, Greg on YouTube saying he grew up with the original Atari. So, you know, there's there's a match. There's a match out there. <laughs> All right. I would love to. So I'd love to hear from your viewers what their favorite Atari game is. Mine was a game called Kaboom. So that's how we'll know if they actually played Atari. <laughs> well, guys, here's a real test. So, uh, you know, try to fresh up your mind and uh, let, us, let us know in the chat. And uh, in the meantime, so obviously, you know, uh, this live stream is monitor, you know, it's designed uh, for Xbox uh, certified. So what does that actually mean when it's uh, designed for Xbox? So that's a great question. So with the new generation of Xbox Series consoles with the Series X, it was our first uh, console that could do native 4k 120 gaming right and so for a lot of pc gamers that'd be like well we've been kind of doing that for a while but a lot of gamers now especially ones that are into like premium consoles like the series x 
will have a desk set up where they have their PC and their console there together. And sometimes they're just doing monitor switching. Right, right. right. So we wanted to make sure most standard TV living room experiences that people are accustomed to using with the console are usually only 60 frames per second, right? And so having something that is really capable of running PC games at high resolution and being able to do Xbox is kind of like, there's a ton of PCs, uh, monitors out there in the space that um, might have high specs, but it doesn't mean they've been tested on the Xbox. It doesn't mean that they right. work with variable refresh rate and can use all the feature sets that Xbox has over it, like with HDMI 2.1. And so being able to know that that experience is gonna be both good on console and on PC is kind of a cost savings for a lot of people. I know that sounds kind of crazy if you think about it, but having one display to rule them all, um, especially something that like a 32 like inch. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, that's that's I that's how I have my home desk set up is I don't wanna have to context switch, right? I don't wanna have to go into a different flow. I wanna be able to sit in the same space, play my, get my games on whatever platform it's on. So having a monitor that's gonna give that great experience on both PC and console, um, that, I mean, I'm using two of them right now. I really dig this monitor. So um, yeah, that's what I'd say is it takes advantage of all the good features inside the Xbox and seamlessly integrates with them. There's also so, a little bit of a downside to this because personally, I, I really like Rocket League and Rocket League also has crossplay. So I play on my PC and <laughs> usually when I played against console players, it used to be very easy because they were always in 60 hertz and delay and stuff like that. But the latest generation made stuff a little bit more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always going to be with, with PC players. I know that's always been a conversation like if there was cross play you don't know what like in, in shooter games you hear this all the time like how who has the better advantage right like with controllers having aim assist or with mouse and keyboard having better latency and better control um yeah that is kind of a challenge i was going to ask on rocket league do you play with a controller when i play, play with PC? a controller you, yes <laughs> yeah that's everyone i know that plays a sports game or that plays yeah, a driving so always game. A controller. <laughs> yeah i think the yeah, majority absolutely. of, of yeah. pc players also play with uh, with a game controller and that's a great question for all your PC Master Race fans out there. Like, if the PC is so great, and it is, I have multiple gaming PCs, then why do we choose the controller for certain games? It, it depends a bit. Per game, right. of course. It's, adaptability yeah. is huge in the gaming space. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, when you need to stare, the analog input, that helps. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we have a question from SD uh, Job from YouTube. Like, uh, is the Xbox Edition superior in or a different or, or different in any way than the original MPG three to one URL QD? Uh, good question, actually. And just a, a strict question: If you have paid any attention to what James has been explaining, then you will know that the Xbox Edition is actually a lot more compatible, and the integrity there of you know being able to utilize the uh, Xbox full potential is a lot more certain with the certified version than the non. Certified version. So uh, indeed, it's not like you will be getting extra features on top of the original monitor. That's not what it's about. It's really about the full uh, integration of the uh, Xbox Pass features and make sure that it's all compatible and running smoothly. Um, so that's what you're getting out of it. Um, there is, I would say this, there is a specific setting mode inside the Xbox Edition one uh, when you're using your on-screen display that has, it, it, with most monitors, you have like gaming modes, right? There's like a movie mode or right, gaming right. or, there is one specifically designed for Xbox, right? And so that is not something you're going to find in an off the shelf monitor. Exactly. Um, let's see, that's about it for now for the questions. Okay, um, so just going into a little bit more detail regarding the design for Xbox, like how does the process actually look like? Like what's the requirements that you guys are looking at when you're like thoroughly testing out of the third party uh, hardware? Okay, great question, great question. So we partner with a lot of different companies, MSI being one of them, and the, w the way it works is whether, whether there's a need asked for from Microsoft or the industry, and what I mean by that is if people are saying, hey, we want to see a video game controller that can do X, Y, and Z, or we want to see a monitor that has this feature set, what we do is we work with our partners and say, are you thinking about bringing a product to market or can we partner and do something like this? The product is submitted as a concept to Microsoft. We review if we think it would be a good fit in the portfolio. Um, and then MSI in this case would send us test samples of that product. 
We're going to go through a thorough review process, make sure that it meets all of our minimum bar uh, requirements, which for us, anything that earns the design for Xbox stamp on the product. So think about the products that are out there in the market, whether you're a gamer um, on PC or console or whatever it is. When you go into the, the video game store, wherever you buy your stuff, when you see items that have the green stripe, when they have the design for Xbox badge, what it means is that they've been in my hands and they've been in my team's hands. It means we've taken a very careful look at them. They work across all generations of the Xbox that we've tested and certified them for. And so you're getting something that while it's not made by Microsoft, it is as good a compatible experience as you can get because gamers like choice, right? People, not everyone uses the same mouse keyboard. Not everyone uses the same controller. And so having different companies that can do these products, but to our standards that our gamers are, are used to, that's what the program is all about. So, and you'll see it on the packaging. I mean, you guys have the, the green uh, icon right beneath my name. If you look for that icon on the box, it means it came through Microsoft's hands and we're telling you it's a good experience. Can you maybe awesome. tell a little bit about the differences you see when comparing, for example, the previous generation Xbox with the current generation Xbox? What kind of technical differences do you also see in the third party products that you have now? Okay, so that's a great question too. So when you go to, uh, so Xbox One came out in 2013 and then we launched the Series S, or sorry, then we launched the One S, then the One X, and then the Series S and Series X consoles, right? The huge difference between those generations of consoles, uh, from my perspective, was how the storage changed, right? You went from a spinning disk storage to essentially solid state. So your boot times are all super faster. But if you also look at the controller that we went to for the Gen 9 controllers, it had different features, it had different designs. We added a share button, which people might say like, why is that a big deal? So much of what we do in gaming now is people wanting to take a capture, take a screenshot, take a video of what they just did and then share it with their friends, whether it's on social media or YouTube or whatever. And so having those type of integrated features built into all controllers is now something that we require, right? That didn't used to be a requirement, but now, Customers have asked for that. We put it in our own Microsoft controller, and so now you're seeing that put into other ones. Now, with other games being able to be played on this generation, an example would be like Flight Simulator. That was a game that previous console generations did not have the power to be able to drive because of the graphics, Yeah. right? And so <laughs> now that that is a game that people are gonna wanna play on PC, they're gonna wanna play it on Series X consoles, what you are they also need for? quite a hefty PC for that. <laughs> oh, totally, right? And that's, so that's why people started asking, when are we gonna get an authentic flight stick, right? And so you start to see those type of accessories as, as the hardware can do more and as the games require more, the accessories will follow, right? So as, as, as like Forza Horizon 5 has really taken off and so like racing wheels have been a big ask lately where people wanna do that full sim experience. So yeah, basically, like out of the sense. box, you still get a certain mainstream experience. But once you want to go deeper into a certain game, like Flight Simulator, like you mentioned, then you want to have those more specific accessories to make it more realistic or, or just play better. Right. Absolutely. I, I mean, in every we talked about this when you said you prefer to play Rocket League with a controller, right? Like we want to have options. The best thing we can do at, as a design for Xbox team is give the gamer a chance to come and play the game however they want to do it, right? And I mean, mouse keyboard is a part of that on the console as well. And, and being able to have the experience you want to have, whether you want to try to play flight sim on mouse keyboard or on controller or on a flight stick, and I can tell you this, like I've never flown a plane before, but I'm definitely terrible using flight controls on console. <laughs> um, so, yeah. but some people want that realistic experience, right? Yeah. Uh, Gigaram is saying, I love my One X uh, Scorpion Edition, also got the Series X. Wow, you're, uh, you're well off, dude. <laughs> I um, would say, so first of all, thank you. Thank you for buying that. But I would say that one of the things, even talking about the, the Scorpio Edition, like one of the things I love about the consoles we build and the stuff we do at Microsoft is all the little special edition stuff, like getting something that you know is going to be a limited edition type item, like a the the project scorpio edition those were a very limited run and so those to me really appeal to the collector and all of us as gamers is having something that 
only a certain amount of people are going to be able to get it. Right. Um, okay, so uh, James, you, you already briefly mentioned that uh, VRR is like a variable refresh rate, right? It's, it's part of the uh, the process and, uh, you know, just how, uh, because since in the console world, you know, that's not something that's been there, you know, all the time, you know, it, it's new. So how uh, important is that for the consoles? Like, can you share some insights on that? Sure, sure. So variable refresh rate, it, think of it uh, from the console perspective. If you are a PC player, I'm sure you know what either AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync is, right? And it's basically a way for your display to sync with whatever your graphics output is to give you the best refresh rate in order to not have like screen tearing, right? So for consoles, this is kind of different because with a console, like I was saying before, most customers are gonna have what you would call your standard living room experience where you're plugged into a TV. Most TVs, even good 4K TVs, often don't go above 60 Hertz. The ones in my living room only goes to 60, right? What variable refresh rate does is that the console natively through HDMI will communicate with the monitor and it will choose the highest possible refresh rate that your monitor is capable of doing. Because the MSI one can go to 144, you will always be playing at max what the console can output, which is 120. Um, so yeah, it's essentially like, I don't want to say it makes it a no brainer, but any PC fan knows so much of what PC is, is setting up all your dials and switches and settings, right? <laughs> yeah, Anytime you load a new game, all your sliders. But that's the thing with this, you plug it in, it will speak to the console. The console will say, hey, I can output 120 hertz and the monitor will say, I got you, right? I, I'll, I'll set to 120 then. And that's for a lot of people who might not be in that PC gaming space, having that first real hero experience with the monitor like this, that you just plug it in and it works the way you want to work. That's what we were trying to do here. Right, right, wonderful. So you don't actually have to change anything yourself. It's an automatic process. Correct. Which, Absolutely. Which, which has a lot of value, I can imagine, right? Um, okay, so then um, since you know you are also mentioned that 4K and 120 hertz, that's like really like one of the biggest steps in console, right? Also for Xbox Series X. Uh, so how was the implement implementation process on uh, Xbox? Uh, you know, in, in this aspect. So I would say this was one of the big challenges we had um, because with 4K gaming, it's we as gamers are always wanting to push the envelope right like oh, i want a graphics card that's going to be good seven years from now in my pc the challenge with that is a lot of consumers are not having a display or they're not having a tv at home that can hit that sweet spot right this is the same challenge we we have when it's like okay we have this new game for you like flight simulator download 110 gigabyte game right and not everyone has the network bandwidth to be able to do something so some of the big challenges is finding like, where was that sweet spot of something that was going to give phenomenal performance out of the box in this generation, but then sustained good performance for the next three to five years down the road. Because like, how fast is the, the, the monitor and uh, television market changing, right? Like, yeah. when are we gonna see rapid. 8K TVs, right? And, and we don't, we're, I don't want to be in the business of making consumers buy something new every year. Like that might be financially good, but as a gamer, no one wants to have to do that. Right. And so having something where if you look at the previous generation of what we had, which was one X, you could get to 4k, but you weren't getting it at 4k 120 natively across all games. It was something that was only unlocked with certain ones. And so what we have now is when you plug a series X in, right whatever game you play has those capabilities. And when you plug it into a display like this, and that's the challenge with PC, right? Is like, how is this gonna perform at this level? I have a graphics card that can run this at max settings, but now I bought this new game and I can only run it at 30 FPS. That's not how the console works, is the console optimizes all of the games to run natively at 4K 120. So like, it definitely is a challenge because you're trying to identify where can you meet most of those consumers 
but then also slightly future-proof the product. Right. So then, you know, it, it makes sense that when uh, gamers, when you guys, like for example, uh, you know, invest in a uh, well high quality or good monitor with a high refresh rate and a high uh, resolution, then you are, you know, at least you're sure that with you know the kind of this kind of consoles, you are actually making the most use out of the monitor's capability, which is, uh, of course, uh, you know, a big part of the journey of gaming. So uh, that, that's great, you know, how, how fluid that, that process actually is. Also yeah, in the I past, would say... Oh, go sorry, ahead. quickly interrupting. Also in the past when you, for example, um, plugged in the old, older Xbox um, into your, for example, 144 gaming monitor or your 60 hertz TV, it didn't really make that much of a difference back then yeah. because the <laughs> Xbox would output 60 FPS maximum anyway. Mm -hmm. But nowadays you notice a huge difference whether you're using like a basic TV or a high-end gaming monitor when playing console games as well. Yeah, so that's the thing for me is, um, traditionally in the console space, it, it has been a TV experience. And I, like being a gamer that plays, I play equal on console, I play mobile, I play on PC. I would like to see that paradigm shifted where someone could say like, I want a good monitor that I could play any of these on. Because, I mean, there are studies that have been shown too, it's actually easier on your eyes to do that, right? Then try to go play on a 65 inch that has different settings and then go to play on your monitor at something different. You're gonna always feel like one experience is slightly better or worse than the other. If you're using the same monitor for both your console and for your PC, and you know that there's headroom in that monitor, which your guys has, that you're gonna get the best experience no matter what your no matter what your device can output, the monitor is not going to be the bottleneck, right? right. Not with something that's like 144 hertz. I mean, like, because if you think of the monitor space in the last few years, first it was like, oh, 1080p, then 2K, then 4K, and then it was like, no, but then you had the refresh rate wars, right? 60, 120, 144, the, you're getting the best of everything here, right? So, um, yeah, I look at it as like, this is like the Swiss army knife of monitors. It's the <laughs> yeah. one monitor to rule them all. What so, do you think this will mean for competitive gaming on console in the future? Oh, that's a good question. So for me, I, competitive gaming, like any of us who, who have looked into competitive gaming, I'm a, I'm a big fan of esports. Like I watch a lot of competitive StarCraft. Um, when you look at an esports tournament, like let's be frank, they're not playing on televisions. They are playing usually on PCs, but then even if it's a game that is a console game, they are playing on monitors. And the reason for that is the sharpness, the distance that you want to sit from the screen, and it doesn't make sense to sit close to a 65 inch screen, right? Like the refresh rates, all of those things that go into giving you the slightest little edge. And I, I, I know people might joke and say, does it really make a difference? Ask all your gamer friends if they use a wired or wireless mouse and why they do. I'm sure some of them are going to say latency, right? I don't want to lose out on that latency. And so to me, I think this is the future. Like I would like the conversation to be the best experience on console could be on TV or it could be on monitor and you get to choose. Like for me, I prefer to play on monitors. And so I, I would say this is what is going to become the norm. It just takes up less space, right? It's more versatile. Right. Yeah, I just don't see, like, I love a TV. I have four of them in my house, but for games, this, <laughs> I hope this not in the same the room. <laughs> the, yeah, but this is the experience I'd want to choose. And from a competitive standpoint, I mean, if you're playing any type of game to try to be the best, you're going to do everything you can to give yourself that advantage and the monitors will give you that advantage over a television. Right, so then, you know, tied into that question, uh, you know, from your perspective, uh, your expertise, you know, uh, for the gamers, for, for the viewers out there, you know, uh, who have a console and they want to get into, you know, gaming monitors, you know, well, what are the tips that you can give them as to, you know, what they should pay attention to? When so I would first one? of all, oh, so great question. So I would say to me, I like versatility for starters, right? So if you're looking, um, if you're new to the monitor space, and you only have a console to me i'd say the the chance is high at one point or another that you're going to attach another type of device to this as well which means what type of inputs do you have most graphic card graphics cards are going to output either display port or hdmi or usb-c or something like that 
So you want to make sure that you kind of have breathing room about how many devices you might be able to plug into it. So the Xbox natively does HDMI. Most graphics cards for PC are display ports. So having something that's going to have a lot of inputs, which I think is huge. One of the things that the MSI monitor has that a lot of monitors skimp out and don't put in theirs is a built-in KVM, which I really like because it gives you the availability to not have to use up all of the USB ports on your computer if you don't want to, right? Um, having things like a good response time, uh, good refresh rate, good, um, I mean, size is, people feel differently about size, like 32 inch monitor. A lot of people seem like that's huge, right? I, I grew up going to school on, on 12 inch monitors. So 32 <laughs> is big, but yeah. now I use two 32s, right? And so the key is I, I look for something that can do a lot of things pretty well, and that's going to give you prolonged quality experience. Because if, if you try to buy something that does the absolute best thing you can on console, and then you decide, man, I want to play PC also, but the monitor I bought only caps out at 120 hertz. Now I want to do PC and is capable of putting out 144. Like, is that going to make a difference? Uh, do a web search. It does make a small difference, right? The same way a wired or wireless mouse would work or the same way a slow ping time on a server would work. So all of those small things in a monitor, like having a lot of inputs, having uh, the capability to have like a USB port in there. I would say one of the things your guys' monitors do really well that not a lot get right is you have really slim bezels right and if you do use two monitors having that center line can be a struggle but if there's no bezel there that's a huge value add plus like i'm big on controls and a lot of monitors have all these buttons that you can't really see what they do because there's no space to put a line for them the msi monitor has like a multi-positional um i don't know i call it like a thumbstick almost right yeah, a joystick, it's, yeah. yeah it's so intuitive it's so easy to read the menu it's so easy to make your selections like why have 10 buttons if you don't know what nine of them do, right? Having the joystick <laughs> there is just so much easier. It's almost um, like those... you almost like you were on our development team as well. <laughs> well, I mean, to me, I, if you are a good, if you are a, a, a solid gaming company and like I use an MSI motherboard in my computer at work, like gamers know I'm glad what to hear that. gamers would use, <laughs> right? Like that's the thing though is if a, a product is designed by a gamer, then it's more likely to be used in all of those ways that a gamer would say, how could I push this to its limit? Or how can I do something really quickly on the fly? So those type of things in your guys' product, I can really tell have been thought through, right? Someone really did the work to optimize that experience. Okay, okay. Um, um, so uh, earlier we uh, also talked about, you know, uh, what is designed for Xbox. Now, uh, if you have to phrase like, what is really uh, the importance here of design for Xbox? Uh, you know, what are we talking about then? Is like, uh, you know, the recommended specs? Are we talking about the compatibility here, or you know, what kind of advantages are gamers getting out of it, out of the console, out of the gaming monitor? So, um, yeah, what are we looking at? Okay, so good question. So. In an industry like this, um, it, I mean, think of like the cell phone industry or something. You could buy a cell phone charging cable from any company out there. If you go on any like web-based store, there's 10 million options for you to choose, right? But all of those are gonna have varying quality, right? And as a consumer, sometimes we get too much choice and I, I don't know where to start. What's a good headset, right? And if all gamers know this, this is like the biggest joke that we have in, in the industry mm -hmm. is how do you know it's a gaming product? Because it's got a ton of LEDs on it, right? But that's- <laughs> That's exactly the answer. That, <laughs> but here's the thing. I, I say that, but I love LEDs. My keyboard, my mouse, my monitors, everything's RGB, right? But the point is, if it really is a great experience, it means it's been verified to work well on that product. And so you can go out there and try to find a headset that we never looked at, or try to find a controller that we never tested. I don't encourage you to do that because I would say you're likely going to not have a great experience and you're probably going to be frustrated that you wasted money. Um, for me, I only want to use some, like being a person who's in hardware, I try out everything before I actually buy it, right? I work on my own car, I work on my own bicycles because I want to know, I want a trusted source on there. 
every product that is a design for Xbox product means the people who work on the hardware have tested this against all like the next couple of revisions of the operating system that's on the console. We have tested it on multiple different. So if like a flight stick working on one flight game is one thing, but working across all flight games is a different story, right? And so when we test those products, we're doing all of that work for you because when you're in the store, you don't get a chance to bring in your own rig, plug it in and see what the experience is like. That's why we do that at my lab. The guy who sits next to me has an i9 with a 3090 in it. I've got a 5900 with a 6800 XT in it because I'm the AMD guy. You guys are and loaded. <laughs> test, but, but here's the thing, like you were talking about with Flight Sim, how can you test a game that's going to test the limits if you don't have the hardware that can push it, right? Like if we want to know what the boundary is of these monitors or what the boundary is of our hardware, you can't try to run it on the 980 Ti, I'm running it at home. Um, no shame there, it, it gets the job done. But that's the thing is with all the design for Xbox products that carry that green badge, it means that people who understand the backside of the Xbox ecosystem have looked for all the things that could potentially cause an issue for you. And we've ironed those out before they even get to you. Sounds like solid process. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> awesome. So Rafael uh, Hassel is asking, is it like FreeSync or uh, V-Sync? The variable uh, refresh rate on, on Xbox is a bit more comparable to, to FreeSync. Uh, V-Sync basically locks your uh, refresh rate, whereas FreeSync, your refresh rate is adjusted towards the output of the, in this situation, Xbox. So this is more comparable to FreeSync. Yes, that would be accurate. That's, that's accurate. And that's, I'd say it's one of these things that every, uh, if if you are an NVIDIA guy or if you are an AMD guy, you tend to go for what you know, right? And they all are kind of, I don't want to call it like secret sauce. We kind of have that joke that everyone has their own secret sauce of what they do. But essentially, and anyone who knows, like if you do some searching on the internet, you'll know what's inside uh, most current gen consoles is AMD anyways, right? But this works in that way, that basically there is a communication there and it gives the best possible match. So whatever whatever it can output, it will. It will sync to the best possible settings. I mean, and it's basically, I wanna say variable refresh rate, if I remember correctly, I don't know my Xbox in front of me. It's a simple in the menu, one click item. You just say enable variable refresh rate and it means you'd never have to worry about it. Plug in the monitor, it works. Okay. Um, so uh, you also said that you are actually already have used or are still using the uh, uh, MPG 321 uh, UR, which is the certified version for Xbox. So w w what is actually your overall experience w with that? Like, yeah. So I would say, so I came from using uh, 227s, um, and these are obviously bigger than 32s. And so originally when i first started it was kind of my eye I, I had to step back a little bit with my old eyes it was it was a lot to take in but over time i found like i set my response time to fastest i set my brightness max to 100 because i often game in my room when it's dark and so i like my monitors super bright and crisp i um the games i play on this just look phenomenal i mean i I'm like a very amateur Twitch streamer, uh, but I do play PC games on it. I do play console games on it. Um, it is my full-time monitor at home. It is the one, like, I'm staring at two of them right now. I I like it better than the previous ones I had bought. I will say monitor is one of those areas as a PC gamer for a long time that I think I maybe was skimping on, right? It's like... I bought the best GPU you could get and I bought the best CPU and then you run out of money and it's like, okay, I'll buy a $200 1080p monitor, <laughs> right? And it's like, you kind of you kind of bottleneck yourself. But I will say like, this is to me like the gold standard now, whereas a 32, if you were a single monitor player, a 32 is definitely the sweet spot because it is it is big enough that you're not gonna need more but it's also small enough that you can have it at a desk experience and not be overwhelmed. But if you are something like a, a gamer that also does content creation, where you like to have two screens at the same time, which is what I do, you know, you'll have your stream up, you'll have your chat up, you'll have multiple things running at one time. Having two 32s is 
because of the way you guys have designed the bezels, it's just such a seamless experience, right? I that the LEDs on the back are really subtle. They're not overpowering. I mean, we made we made jokes about LEDs and um, everything gamer has LED on it, but I don't want to be like overwhelmed with brightness from it. And this is a very subtle. I actually have mine kind of in this flowing red one that kind of looks like I don't know if you guys remember the show Knight Rider. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's got back in the days was my favorite show. <laughs> right, but that's it. I feel like to me, this is a monitor that was designed by someone who appreciates high quality products, but is also a gamer. So there are those components that the gamers are going to love. But if you're using this as your full time monitor for work and with COVID, a lot of us have been working from home like this. I don't get eye fatigue using a monitor like this. Right. And working in the gaming industry, you spend like 10 hours a day in your chair looking at your monitor. I. I don't and that's only for work and then you get home and you game (laughs) or get home well nowadays you are home but (laughs) you continue gaming absolutely yeah this to me like i i can't say enough good things about it like we have at microsoft we see so many different products especially the design for xbox program and it's it does happen every once in a while where we even though it's our job to look at all of these find a product where we're really like wow, I'm really taken in by this product. Like this is something that I as a consumer would use every day. And I mean, I am using it every day. Um, so I, I, to me, it's just, it's the perfect blend of performance, but then like subtle aesthetics. It's not over the top. The colors are not ridiculous. It, I mean, it, it looks classy. It performs well. It, it's versatile. I mean, to me, that is what we want in a piece of gaming hardware. Right. I'm definitely going to cut out this piece and then send it to our headquarters and so everybody can celebrate like, no, hey, you know, we have a true <laughs> expert here, really enjoying the product. That's that's really awesome to hear. It's a huge compliment that you keep using them <laughs> after verifying yeah. them. <laughs> actually, yeah, you have had a lot more time than me actually using the product. So uh, I actually have to catch up, actually. <laughs> Well, and anyone who's used monitors, um, like people who are PC gamers kind of know this is even if you look at like cell phone screens, different display manufacturers have different kind of color variants that might not fit for your eyes great, right? And sometimes you have a display and you're like, man, this one really has like a, a yellow tint to it or something that just doesn't seem right. These just seem very neutral in terms of color for me. And I like that. I, I don't want to feel like overwhelmed. I just feel like um yeah it, staring at a screen all day this is what i want it to look like yeah. I, this is what i am going to have it look like i'm not changing these out yeah and we're lucky you know because of the quantum dot you know that the, the color accuracy here the fidelity is just very accurate which you know yes you describe also yeah. very natural so uh yeah um actually you know do, do you want to give uh chat you know the chat your uh twitch username or is sure, something that sure. uh, you know so that so you know, if you guys are interested you can definitely go check out how a real expert uses the gear and plays games <laughs> um, so let me yeah i will do that so i'm gonna post so i have twitch chat up and youtube up I'll, my username is the same for both i'm not it's sure if also... you can post links but if you post it to me directly then i will paste it in in our Sure, sure. Okay. I'm doing it right now. So this is if you want to find me online, um, my username is pretty much the same on most systems. If you want to grab me on Steam or on Xbox Live or on Origin or on YouTube or on uh, Twitch, I'm Kill Savant on most um, on most platforms. I game as as often as I can, but do understand when you do this for a living sometimes you get you go through burnout where it's like you know, <laughs> yeah. i've been testing flight controls for four hours and then i come home the last thing i want to do is play flight simulator <laughs> right i i want to go play among us and not think about anything right or something very chill <laughs> awesome awesome um yeah guys uh make sure if you still have any questions for our expert for james you know make sure to drop it in the chat because we are actually nearing our uh nice little talk and um yeah james um by the way now i got the knight rider song stuck in my head <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, actually when, you, when you mentioned knight rider i almost was like trying to hum you know the, 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 the theme song and then i was like no you know copyright is gonna you know screw us up later 
Yeah, it's, it's the, you know, the catchy theme song. Um, but yeah, it definitely seems like you are a real expert who has, you know, his hand been, you know, uh, through all of the platforms, every hardware you can imagine, all the consoles and everything throughout you know, the decades. You've really been through them all. And um, yeah, guys, so grab a chance if you have any questions left. Otherwise, you know, we're going to uh, thank James for his... Uh, I already Precious see some time. people in our chat and, who started uh, following you. <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you. And for getting up so, so early. Much. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate being here. Um, yeah. Thank you for the fans of MSI, the fans of Xbox. And um, reach out to me and let's game together. I'd love to meet some of you. All right. Sounds good. Then, uh, James, uh, you know, I uh, hope you didn't mind getting up so early. And, uh, <laughs> All good. Thanks for getting up I, yeah. so early for us. <laughs> hope you uh, have Absolutely, a bright day guys. ahead of you. Thanks for joining okay, and thanks uh, so much. Have see a you good next day. Time. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Oh man, really makes me want to uh, start gaming now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you have. Guys, I yeah. believe you have a PC underneath your desk. You have yeah. an Xbox on your desk, so you should be good. <laughs> exactly, and I'll be using both of them in just a bit because you know I obviously still have to assemble the monitor and uh, go through a little bit of a. Uh, some informative stuff so you guys know what's actually in front of me but you know uh, in the meantime i think it's finally time to uh, to pass around the xbox game pass time for our so first winner i hope you guys participated otherwise if you just joined and you missed out just go to msi.com slash two slash insider and uh you can still win after this one uh one of today's xbox game pass uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with it, you don't actually need an Xbox to use it because you can just redeem this on your PC and then you have a month free access to all of the games they, uh, they offer on the platform. You can download anything, play anything that's on there. And it seems like we have our first winner, Eddie Cozart. Congratulations. Congratulations, Eddie. Hope you have fun with the Game Pass and uh, knock yourself out the coming month. Um, in, the, in the coming days, I will uh, contact you guys, the winners, uh, through email. So you will receive uh, the instructions there, how you can redeem the code and uh, you know, some details. Uh, so just check your uh, inbox in the coming days. And to the ref you, uh, rest of you guys, still good luck because we still have more to give away today. Okay, now uh, without further ado, I'm finally going to assemble the monitor, do some ASMR peeling and uh, we can get kicking <laughs> because later I'm also going to uh, I also game on the Xbox Series X, play some uh, Halo Infinite in uh, on there, hope there are some uh, fans and also uh, on the ESIS TI5 which is underneath the table, I will also uh, demonstrate, table will demonstrate both console and PC gaming. Yep, cool. All right. In the meanwhile, while you're assembling the monitor, I will fire some questions from the chat to you. I see a question here from Anuravex. When and where can we buy this monitor from? <coughs> yeah, actually, uh, the regular version is uh, already on the market, but uh, the Xbox version, right now, it's actually uh, in the logistic process. But if you're living in the US, um, you know, then you actually can receive this uh, or see this in the shops in the coming two weeks, uh, approximately, already. Otherwise, uh, it's going to take for the rest of the world about three, four weeks to uh, really launch this product. So yeah, definitely if you're looking for a very capable all-round and high-end monitor for both your console and uh, desktop, make sure to check it out. Try it out in the shops if you get the chance. Um, any other questions, just let me know. I see Gybotron says, just got that MPG 321 URQD today. Gaming in 4K, 144Hz is amazing. I'm glad you like it. And thanks for buying you it. You lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually quite jealous because, you know, I've only had the chance to play with this for, uh, you know, a few days. And you already have it at home. So uh, definitely uh, a big, big shout out to you. Enjoy it. So first of all, just uh, this process is very simple. It's a toolless process. All you have to do is stick them in and use the thumb screw. Make sure it's attached properly. After which you just have to insert the block into the monitor. So usually or with the older models, we have four hinges. One, 
two, three, four. But with the newer generations, we figure you know uh, we're going to uh, spare you the two extra screws because this means when you actually fit the block into the monitor, you only have to screw in two screws instead of four and you don't have to click in all four sides of the hinges which makes it a lot easier so you can you know get to actually using this beast even faster out of the box okay uh, let me turn this around because there's uh, two screws that's already pre-installed in here so you don't have to look them up in the box because they're already in here uh, let me show you let's see um Question from Ashril: When is the Artemis uh, 341 mini lab monitor gonna release? Oh, that one. You, uh, if you're really interested, you definitely will have to wait until uh, about second half, late second half of this year. Uh, right now, because you know, there's a lot of problems and shortages with these kind of high-end uh, innovative panels, especially when you're speaking about mini lab. Um, so yeah, you'll have to be a little bit more patient. But uh, the fact that you know about it, um, yeah, <laughs> good job, dude. Uh, Warzone Sniper is asking, certainly not a question about the monitor, but when do the new uh, MSI PSU come out? That's relatively soon. Later this month, they should pop up in the first stores. It's uh, depending on your region a bit. So best to check with your local reseller for more information. Um, but that shouldn't take too long. All right, and then put the two screws back up. By the way, if you're interested in the new series of MPG power supplies, soon I will make sure to include them in a the live stream as well. Oh, really? Just so <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, if you guys didn't know, you know, Michio is really the guy uh, when it comes to a uh, motherboard uh, or uh, power supplies or our gaming cases, he will be the one to uh, go with you through yeah, for most journey. separate computer components, apart from graphics cards, that's of course Peter's thing. <laughs> okay, so it's all set up. And as you can see, there are still some protective foil Ooh, on the monitor. Peeling time. <laughs> of course, this is uh, the part where you really just undress this beautiful lady. Always the best part of the stream. <laughs> ah, so satisfying. <laughs> There's more to come. Okay, let me see if I have gotten it all uh, all right we have more here with the emblem because there's also a protective layer on the emblem gotta protect lucky this one is a little bit more protected than uh, the rest but I almost got it Now it really shines. Look at this sparkle. <laughs> One Jason says ASMR time. <laughs> For sure. Okay, um, let's see if there's something else or not on the backside. No, I pretty much got it all on the backside. On the front. Armin is asking, does this one come with a different looking box compared to the original MPG? 321 URQD. Yes, you are correct. Let me just show you since uh, it's here anyways. So this one compared to the original one is much cleaner. Let me uh, make me heal disappear for a second. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> much cleaner, uh, a bit more in the style of the Xbox as well. You see much more green, and like James mentioned before, and the green you can is a bit difficult without green screens. There <laughs> is a sticker from the Xbox, but it's uh, right now like transparent because of the key for a green screen. But this is the green sticker. 
like. And you will also see much more labeling for the Xbox and how it's, uh, you know, what kind of features we're talking about here that's already being certified by Xbox. So yeah, throughout the box, you can see many green elements and also Xbox stickers. Definitely, yes, the box looks different. Good catch. Repo Man is asking, did I miss the peel? Well, yeah, you missed just the peel on the back. The peel. I think there is more on the front, so maybe you can peel off the front sticker for Repo Man. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be less satisfying, but uh, ah, at I, least I cannot peel any more than this. I mean, <laughs> I would have to uh, disassemble it if I want to peel even more. Uh, Noel is asking if the Game Pass also works on PC. Yes, it yes. does. That was still quite satisfying. What is not so satisfying are your fatty fingers on top of the monitor right now. <laughs> well, you don't have to make it extra clear to the viewers. <laughs> <sighs> All right, here we have the MPG 321UR-QD, which stands for Quantum Dot. So let's check it out on the front. Jerud is saying, whoa, that color slash finish is sexy, but you can get me to give up my MSI Prestige PS341 WU. Oh, uh, that the 5K one is, monitor. That one is OG. <laughs> Congrats. And he owns five of them. Wait, what? <laughs> five 34 inch monitors? That, that's one hell of a widescreen setup. Okay, uh, <laughs> if this is the case where I will have to say picture or it didn't happen. <laughs> so. I, I'm wondering how big your room is as well. If you have five. how big is your desk? <laughs> Thirty-four inches. Holy long. crap! Um, yeah, the front. Uh, if you uh, listen on the interview, like James mentioned, he's a big fan of how the setup, uh, how the aesthetic setup with uh, the bezel-less design. And when we talk about adjustable stands, of course, this one is also fully uh, four-way adjustable stand capable. So really make sure you can set up the monitor in the best angle that, uh, that's comfortable for uh, your eyes and your neck, which is very important if you're doing long sessions. So if you take a look at how thick it is, it's a relatively average thick boy. So, um, and this one actually also has a built-in power supply which uh, you know, also accounts for the thickness as well. Of but course, then you the lose the separate brick yeah, next to yeah. um, So yeah, exactly. So you don't have the brick laying around on the ground on your desk. Um, so it's already built into the monitor. Sunco PX is asking, why is there no option to buy a glossy panel? That mostly has to do with the fact that they're meant for gaming and glossy will give you reflections and that's Usually, most gamers find that very distracted. I personally agree with that. Yeah, because if you have a light source behind you or anything, then yeah, it can actually <laughs> make you miss your enemy or something. Even if you're not in a uh, room with a lot of sunlight, even like regular light sources can really reflect on the glossy surfaces as well. So that's why you know it's really been out of the industry for quite some time. Um, yes, if we take a look at the backside in a bit more uh, close up. Then, oh, let me show you here, the RGB, the subtle RGB part, it's only from here to here, that's it. So it's not the glossy part, it's not this part, it's only the upper bar. And so here we have carbon, uh, the carbon effects with a glossy element here with our MPG series logo and the rest are a uh, brushed metal lock. So when we take a look at it, oh, this is really heavy, so I try to. Uh, okay, J Root's monitors are oh. not not in one setup. So three are on his desktop, and two on his laptop. You are still a very hefty setup. I, I can <laughs> imagine that three 34-inch ultra-wide monitors. <laughs> I think for some games, that's yeah. <laughs> that have to be, has to be insane. Uh, so this monitor is also quite unique when it comes to uh, the connectivity, because you have tons of connectivity right here. You have two times the HDMI 2.1, so capable of doing 4K 144 hertz, the newest, and also the DisplayPort 
uh, together with a type C which is also a display port alternative so ideally you can even use four devices or four systems at the same time but then you have to make use of the monitors KVM feature in which you can uh, use all of those systems at the same time uh, by using picture in picture or picture by picture but of course you have to shift uh, the sources when you have to switch between them but when they are displayed at the same time you can transfer files you can uh, use the same set of keyboard mouse or joystick to um, you know uh, really um, make use of all the systems simultaneously. We Hello have Hussein, welcome. Oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we have tons of USBs on this side alone. We have four. Of which two, which are these two, are also reserved for uh, using your controller. So if you can plug in the USB there, the, uh, the receiver, then you can also make sure to uh, make use of the monitor with uh, the uh, controller so that's a dedicated port for that uh, otherwise you know there's uh, the combined jack and uh, the headphone and mic jack with the power uh, supply input I'm just trying to rest my arm a little bit because this is so heavy <laughs> and furthermore you have all of those USB type B's uh, which you have to use like oh, like here here and here you have to use in order to have the upstream connection and also make use of the KVM so basically so if you plug in your controller your mouse your keyboard all into your monitor you can with the KVM function you can use them on both your PC and the console right Exactly. Well, uh, not, not a console uh, uh, in this case because uh, you have, the, the source will have to be compatible with mouse and keyboard yeah okay but for example if you also have your controller plugged in yes then yes yeah and on the side we actually have more connectivities so <laughs> this one is really packed with USBs so you don't actually have to reach out to your desktop if you want to make use of many peripherals because here we have even two more USB connections with two separate microphone and headphone jacks on the left side of the monitor which I've heard that Michiel is actually a fan of because it's situated on the left side yeah I like to have them on the left side and that's because well when I have it on my desk I have my mouse on the right side and for example when you plug in a cabled headset or something I don't want it to cross my mouse pad so I want it to be on the left side of my monitor so I think that's a, that's a big plus. So furthermore, but if, if you're left-handed, that may be different. I can understand that. <laughs> furthermore, let me give you some more uh, insights regarding the specification. So this one is a 32-inch 4K uh, eSports monitor. It has a flat screen, so it's not curved. And uh, yeah, it has a G-Sync compatible. Uh, also quantum dot I will get into this in just a moment a little bit more details and um, yeah one millisecond response time and this one is also a beast of an HDR uh, certification so it has HDR 600 uh, which really means that you can have a very very good time uh, when you enjoy HDR content whether it's games or uh, entertainment uh, especially nowadays on Windows 11, if you're on that, it's made so easy and there's a lot more emphasis on HDR in order to activate and use this and have a really good time with especially a 600 monitor. So, uh, you know, you have like HDR ready and then uh, you have HDR 400 and now you have HDR 600. So it's really quite up there uh, on par with how you can experience through HDR experience. But so, Mandelman yeah. is saying that's not dying light. Later on, we'll play some dying light. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, and Roth Sothi is saying I have the that's same the MSI water right bottle. There. It's a great bottle. It's the flying <laughs> kick. <laughs> the flying zombie kick. Yeah, earlier I saw as the Rockman was asking, what are you drinking? I'm actually drinking water because th this month I'm not drinking any sugar drinks at all. So right. if you see me drinking Coke or anything else, during well, the stream, please punish me in the chat. O only water this month. That's quite a feast, guys, because Michiel usually don't hydrate himself. He, uh, <laughs> he just chucks down energy drinks and Cokes. And uh, the fact that he's drinking water today really shows, you know, the world is changing. So All uh, of March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and okay. beer. I'm still allowed to drink beer, <laughs> but no um, coke. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we actually also have some specs uh, available for on the screen, uh, just so you guys don't have to ask it uh, all the time. So um, right now I will uh, try to set up the monitor and then I'll get through uh, some of its features that I can show you guys, after which uh, we will uh, get into the gameplay, like so close. So let me make some space here. Because uh, we do need space because it's a big boy. <laughs> Hussein says, but beer is worse than Coke. D depends from which aspect. <laughs> but like, I tried during the day to only drink water so I can treat myself to a beer in the evening. Just one beer? And a weekend too. Sometimes it's three. <laughs> Depends on the size of the beer as well. Okay, uh, let me plug in the uh, cables. I really like the looks of this monitor. I think the badge looks nice, the dragon badge. It's, uh, yeah, the, the gold accent actually is quite uh, chic. Actually, I don't even know. Is that how you, how you say it in English? Chic? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's uh, classy. Yeah, classy. And it's it's more subtle than having the red dragon shield, for example. So regular power connector, no power brick. No, almost there. So this is the same kind of power connector that you would also plug in the back of your computer in your power supply. Later, I'm also going to, uh, well, in just a second, show you guys the software. But in order to make the software, you've got to make sure to plug in the USB Type B into uh, the ports here with uh, the cable that comes along in the box. Otherwise, the software will not work. And you cannot make use of all of the gaming features that comes along with it. Oh. There we go. And then the last one, so I can connect the Xbox as well. So this is the Xbox Series X, right? Yes. And we took our special capture card today, so we will also be able to, to capture it's, it's the Xbox. This is like the first time we're actually using it. Yeah, we're the first time we're using it. A lot of first times in today's live stream. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, everything is set. Now let's hope that we uh, don't end up in an explosion. Shouldn't. Right, make myself comfortable, stay hydrated, because today we're not actually using the air conditioner, so it's a little bit harder than the, uh, the normal. Mm. The air conditioner was very noisy today. I don't really know why, yeah. but... Very weird. We decided to switch it off because of okay. the noise. My keyboard and mouse. So Can guys, you move uh, the monitor slightly to the left? Wait, your left or my left? Your left. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see you. <laughs> None of access, play Forza Horizon. Today we're playing um, Halo Infinite and then we're playing some Dying yeah. Light as well. I'm so we're going really to play close Halo. To, uh, Michiel. Yeah, it's nice and cozy. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Wait. I bet a lot of guys were like, That's oh, better. whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Oof. Some black magic there. Yeah, so we're playing uh, Halo on the Xbox today and um, Dying Light 2 on the, the Aegis TI-5 that is hidden underneath Jazz Desk. Okay, but uh, right before that, uh, oh, let me try to get the software up and running. Show you guys uh, some of the uh, best gaming features or uh, smart features on the monitor. So, uh, okay, then if we, uh, Michiel can go to the capture view, then I can yes. show you guys. So, there are two ways uh, of how you can use the, uh, all of the gaming features and smart features on the monitor. One of which is using the software give you a itself. a little bit more space. And um, <laughs> the other one is by using the joystick on the monitor because that will also bring out the OSD, the on-screen display. Um, so here, um, they are very simple because actually I was I, I read a, a comment in the chat uh, some times ago 
regarding uh, somebody th said the brightness was like so high that he had to return the product because um, you know he was gaming in a very dark room well in order to solve this kind of issue uh, you know we have a f special feature for that uh, which will automatically set the brightness so you don't actually have to uh, you know touch the monitor or uh, anytime you want to change that you have to press some keys or anything all you have to do is set auto brightness control which is this one I'm hoping yeah we have a bit of an issue your so resolution is too high <laughs> so oh, this wait, gets no, very we tiny can, for we us we can't solve that luckily <laughs> scale this Let's is always a little bit of a thing when you use <laughs> 4k if you monitor. guys can read this get glasses please yeah this is much better <laughs> much better <laughs> okay uh oh jason was saying whoa so many usb ports indeed indeed so uh you definitely, Armin is also uh, asking does the monitor use flicker free technology yes anti flicker there's the, that's already built into the panel so you don't have to do anything uh in that department um, so, uh, as I said, uh, the auto brightness control, you just have to put this to auto and then this will make sure that whenever your room is bright, um, it will set the brightness to uh, higher or, you know, depending on how bright it is, it will go to max brightness. Or when you're in a dark room, like the person mentioned in the chat, it will automatically see that the lighting condition is really bad. So in, in order to protect your eyes and to give you more comfort, it will lower the screen's brightness accordingly. So let me show you on a, another view via the camera. I think we need to this reconnect. Is, oh yeah, probably. <laughs> Just a second. Connection failed, okay, that they don't work out. <laughs> Okay, let, let me, me restart from my side. I think it will, it will work now. You can try again. I restarted yeah. the apps. Yay, there we're we back. <laughs> so, here uh, we have, oh, let me turn on some lights. It's quite I've dark. got a little light switch here. All right, there See? we go. It's nice, huh? <laughs> so, there's a little, uh, definitely not webcam here. <laughs> this makes sure that your lighting condition is always red in a... Uh, uh, in real time so this will make sure that everything on the screen is uh, according to the lighting condition in your room so the brighter your room the brighter your screen the darker your room the darker your screen it's it's like the sensor you have on front of your smartphone as well that exactly. will automatically adjust your screen brightness yeah and uh, while we're here there's one uh, very tiny hole in this part uh, in this side as well as this side so what they do is those are actually two integrated microphones and if you are working at home or you know using Discord or anything that's that has to do with communication then you can make sure that when you are in a very noisy environment like uh, someone is vacuuming on the background you know you, you have some kids running around or you know your dog is uh, is barking like crazy then you can make sure to use Soundtune this will make sure that your outgoing audio is going to be filtered through AI and you will have a crisp clean focal uh, experience without all the noises on the background. So that's also uh, you know, the, the active noise cancelling for your microphone. Francisco that's says so that's LDR. Yes, it's indeed an LDR sensor. All right, then we can go back to uh, the capture. So that's auto brightness control uh, right now i don't need this because i'm uh, just trying to demonstrate some stuff so i'm going to set it to off uh yeah really easy and if you don't want to click this or uh, use the software you can just set a hot tune or a hot key to it as well which you can do here which you can uh, actually for all of the feature you can set a hot key so you don't have to open software every single time you can just press a well, like here i have set control alt left to activate smart crosshair and control alt right for optic scope which i will show you now and this you can do for all of the features that you see here sunco px is asking does it support FreeSync 2 or only g-sync well you see it's g-sync compatible so which means you can use this for amd FreeSync as well yeah so you can either use it with amd or nvidia both works or the variable ref refresh rate of the xbox that works as well so here we have for example smart crosshair 
Now, what this does is that um, you know uh, this is not the first time we're dealing with this, but just in case you guys are new or somebody have missed out on this, let me show you what this does. Uh, let me get into Counter Strike for an example. Luckily, this game is very small, so even if there's an update, it's usually done within a second. Yes, thank you. NeuroFX is asking, does it run full bandwidth on the PS5? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's also getting the max capability out of the PS5 as well, the max frames. So uh, 4K, if you mean 4K at least, I think you're hinting yeah. 4K. Uh, you also get 120 hertz uh, and FPS experience. So obviously the monitor is capable of handling more because it goes up to 4K 144, but the consoles right now are capped at 120 uh, FPS. Let me just go to uh, some practice with some easy bots. Let's go for... Um, bup, 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 bup. Ah, dust too is okay. So since this is you know, one of our best eSports monitors, uh, in all of our MPG series, so we have MAG series, which is our arsenal starting uh, entry levels, uh, our MPG series is our performance series, and then we have MEG series, which is our Enzusia uh, series, which is the highest end that we have. But in all of our MPG series, we actually have uh, the smart uh, and um, well, smart and competitive uh, competitive features that you can use that comes along with the monitor. So the one that I mentioned right now, like for example, smart brightness. So if I use the hotkey right now, which is like Control Alt Left, uh, that I have uh, set up earlier, you see. Well, you don't, but let me show you on my camera. By the way, <laughs> do you have your USB Type B um, plugged in in the PC? Yes. Can you maybe switch the RGB light on the back because it defaults to green? <laughs> ah, right, right, right. Because this is an <laughs> Xbox edition, yeah, right? Yeah, it's an so Xbox edition. So let me, let me let me go change that. Do, do, do. RGB. So as you can see here, guys, everything <laughs> is green. So that's why it seems like it's off. But let's go for rainbow, for example. Yeah, that's better. Now it's uh, only a little bit of green, but this is this is okay. <laughs> so, but you know, it's that simple. You just go to the software, you click on the RGB, and here you can pretty much just tune uh, tune this the way you want. Now, no uh, Night Rider today. <laughs> yeah, you are you're living on the edge because if YouTube detects that, detects that, oh, <laughs> we're yeah. screwed. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on your screen, all you see is a green crosshair. But if I change the camera view, because I just activated smart crosshair. Uh, whoop. Oh, we're still stuck. We're still stuck. Oh, Jesus. Let me reconnect. It's one of those days. Yeah, it's one of those days. Okay. There Droid we cam go. is not cooperative. Oh, we're still not there yet. I think you need to reboot your app again. Yeah, I will. I will uh, restart it. Yes. Uh, try again. Uh, no, I cannot connect. Let's... Are you connected to the right network? Yes, but oh, I see what the problem is. Uh, there is some Wi-Fi uh, issue. The mm. Wi-Fi is not. It's, it's unstable. So hmm. that's why we're getting this. Oh, there we are. Let's enjoy while we still have it. So. <laughs> you jinxed it. Oh, <laughs> you totally gone. jinxed it. <laughs> uh, you know what? L let me switch camera because I remember we had this uh, problem with, uh, with the same camera. And uh, if I switch <laughs> to another one, we should have a better experience. So, okay. Just let me connect to Wi-Fi. And... We are good to go. So my, the new IP is 756. Got it. And uh, there we are. Okay, I just died. But here you see there's a big rectangle in the middle. Now this one, uh, actually the, the bot is running so I can't really do much uh, right now. But Wait, let me let me see if I can restart this. Just a he second. 
Let's switch to another mode, which is going to be a lot easier. It's always Kay. hard against bots in Counter-Strike. We're set. So, switch the camera. So, in the previous uh, previous capture, you saw that I had no crosser at all. But right now, you see I have the smart crosshair. This crosshair also changes depending on what you're looking at. So if you're looking at something dark, it would change the brightness or the color to something that's really, let's say... That always stands out sti from really what you're sticks out. Yeah. yeah. And this happens in real time. So it's, there's no delay, otherwise it will be pretty pointless. See, as you can see how fast it reacts. And this is really essential, especially if you don't have a crosser at all. <laughs> now, back in the days, I used to draw black dots on my screen with like a, a Sharpie, but uh, you know, this really takes care of the problem. So especially in competitive games, they really make sure that, or also AAA title games, where you have really dark areas or you know, a lot of uh, situational differences when it comes to contrast and color, this makes sure that you are set whenever and whatever. And when we talk about smart crosshair, well, sorry, uh, optic scope, leave me alone. So now I'm going to activate optic scope. All right, there we go. So you see my center point is enlarged by however magnification you like. So here, if you use the joystick on the back, if you don't want to switch out, uh, switch out of the game, you can go for uh, optic scope, and here you can choose what's the size of this square you're seeing right now that enlarges everything that it sees. So let's go for small, since we have quite a big screen already, and I like to have little distraction. So see? that's now a lot smaller. If I choose medium, boom, large, small. As well as the uh, magnification actually, right now it's on 2x. So if you prefer to have more magnification, you can go for 4x, that's a lot. Or if you don't need that much, just uh, times one and a half. Hussein so, says hex. I agree, Hussein. Let's use one and a half. <laughs> so let's walk around and see how this feels like. So of course, this is going to be much more usable and effective when you have maps where there's like uh, in a lot of this kind of long distance. So if you take a look at, for example, here, on the other side of this tunnel, there can be someone, but the pixels are pretty slim and tight. But if you put the optic scope on this, you already enlarge the pixels twice. So you already have twice the amount of pixels to hit the target area. And if you zoom in, there's even more. So basically, even if you're using a rifle, it means that if you want to make some headshots, it's going to be a lot easier since your target area is much larger than how your uh, opponent sees you. So that's our optic scope, which means whenever you want to use this, you just have to press uh, the hotkey that you set up before and it's gone. So you don't have to use any software. Basically, there is no delay. Um, yeah, so those are our, uh, well, smart uh, AI gaming features that can really help you in our MPG series to, uh, you know, get the most out of the game and get the most out of your hardware. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically also a lot of, uh, of where the added values are. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions regarding this kind of stuff, uh, stuff let me know. Otherwise, I just have to uh, show you a few more information slides regarding, you know, a, a, just a summary for you to have an overview of, you know, what's uh, in the monitor, you know, what can you expect and uh, what kind of features are there, uh, a little bit of information regarding 4K gaming. Then we can finally get into gaming itself. But before that, maybe uh, we can already draw a second winner.
That's a good idea. So let's check it out. If you haven't participated yet, make sure to go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Look at this massive boy. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow, follow the direct link to Gleam um, that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. And make sure, if you're a returning visitor, to also claim your loyalty bonus. Yeah, for we a actually have seen this work out quite well yep. by using the, uh, or claiming the royalty bonus. We have our next winner for today. Congratulations, Blue Watch. Congrats. You also won the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, so uh, if you just joined, uh, I will email the code uh, with the uh, instructions regarding how to redeem in the coming days. So just check your inbox. All right, um, let, me, oh, oh, oh. let me let us switch to the uh, other view from my laptop and then we can get going. All right, oh, seems like I'm blocking it a little bit. Mike is going to do his Let magic. Let me fix that for you. There we go. And he's ah! gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is just an overview of uh, the MPG321 URQD, of what you can expect in this, uh, in this monitor. I'm not going to read everything, so uh, anything that uh, you know that gets the, uh, the yeah that gets your attention, just go for it. Uh, but I just want to highlight just a few things, which is of course its ridiculous refresh rate and HDR 600 capability, as well as if you're even into content creation, this monitor will blow you away. Its color accuracy and fidelity, and uh, it's it's just through the roof. You know, especially looking as uh, you know looking at the fact that this is a gaming monitor but you are getting the content creation values. So the uh, Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, those uh, and the values, uh, uh, even sRGB, they are covering such a wide color gamut. It's, uh, you know, that's also one of the reasons why the colors here look so much more realistic and accurate. Uh, so yeah, if you want to do content creation on here, you are good to go, <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah, uh, Adaptive Sync, it's also G-Sync compatible, which means you can use both parties. You can go for AMD, you can go for NVIDIA, but when you go for NVIDIA, make sure that, uh, you know, you're not getting a too old of a model. You know, it still needs to be supported. And um, you're going to have a quite a good time with, uh, especially with this kind of specs. So, uh, Quantum Dot, I said earlier, you know, I want to get into a little bit of a detail. So, uh, as many of you guys have already known, uh, Quantum Dot has been in uh, our DNA now for quite some time now. Uh, as we noticed that there's really quite the, uh, the, the hunger, the demand for this kind of uh, you know, display because the Quantum Dot itself, it's not just a software feature, it's actual an addition to your panel. It's within the panel where there's an extra layer where a lot of the uh, improved and more effective and efficient light uh, diffuse, diffusion and also how lights are being emitted the luminous. So it's not something you can switch on or off. Exactly, in it's, it's just <coughs> baked in there. So it's really a hardware addition. And this really makes sure that, you know, how the colors are being diffused <coughs> and how everything is being translated into what you're seeing. So really the quantum dot really adds to just how color accurate and <coughs> how realistic your panel actually pops off. And just a few last uh, stuff. If you want to get into 4K gaming, obviously this is a 4K monitor. So if you're getting into 4K monitor, you gotta know beforehand what you're getting into. So you can't just get a uh, you know 4K monitor and expect that you know with your 1660 Super that you can get uh, you know a high refresh rate. You're going to have a bad time, trust me. So you gotta make sure that when you do this kind of stuff, uh, you know, um, you, know we're you can to of give course you switch it back to 1080p, but that's not what <laughs> yeah. you buy a 4K monitor exactly. for. Exactly. So you gotta make sure that you, your computer can actually output enough FPS or uh, you know handle the resolution that you're playing at. So that's really important. And here, if you just look at some of the summaries that Thomas Hardware has done uh, with you know a, a mix of uh, AAA title games and just a few esports games in there like Tom Clancy, um, you can see that, you know, right now with this kind of hardware, it's not easy to run 4K at Ultra. So you really, you have to have the best gears if you want to have the best experience. But with that being uh, said, it doesn't mean that when you have average hardware, you cannot really enjoy, that you can really enjoy what you're getting out of the monitor. Now, what, what this means is that, you know, you're, uh, you're getting kind of to like the console optimization. So you're gonna play around with the settings. You're gonna, you're gonna see, you know, if your if sky, uh, if the clouds quality, you know, they're taking up a lot of the GPU render capabilities. You know, just set this to low, since majority of the times with this kind of settings, you don't actually notice the difference. 
and uh, it's, it's really always a bit of trial and error. Yeah. Like, like so. some settings have a huge impact on your frame rate, but barely yeah. change anything in the game. And for others, it's exactly the other way around. And if you guys are into this kind of stuff, you know, and you don't want to do too much homework yourself, you just to check out, uh, you know, Hardware Unboxed. They have done tons of this kind of game optimizations where they have like. Uh, taken all of the variables into account to show you how you can get uh, get the most out of your hardware with uh, some of the most popular games. Uh, so that's also what it comes down to. If you're uh, if you want to invest in this kind of monitors, of course you're also investing in the future of this kind of monitors, right? Because your hardware, you know, they keep getting better and games keep getting uh, more optimized and 4K becomes more norm. Uh, more normal, then you have a better time uh, in the future. But at least you're set, so uh, you know that's also how you should, uh, you know, approach this kind of uh, monitor investments. Now, if you compare this, for example, with 14, oh, actually, uh, I don't have 14 14 yet because we're just going to talk about 4K. But yeah, like I promised, a very short introduction to the uh, information package because right now we can finally get into the gaming parts themselves. So let me get some of the stuff out of the way. So where are you going to start? PC gaming or Xbox gaming? Oh, let's get let's let's get hopping with uh, the Xbox because yeah, the PC Xbox gaming time. is going to be more in depth. <laughs> let's see if everything is still working. <laughs> Let me switch the source as well. Is the Xbox on? The logo seems off. I think it fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you this nice little uh, wake-up sound. It's, it's quite nice. <laughs> All right, uh, just got my controller, wake it up as well. Got it. Can you Wait. already see something? Uh, let me check. Uh, I had the wrong input, so I didn't see anything yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's not the one. You need the HDMI. Hmm, interesting. I don't have signal yet, but that's because uh, you know we played around with the cable, and maybe I didn't stick in the right cable into it. So I let me check if I got the right. Catcher is not catching anything either. So. Oh really? So maybe I have to restart the Xbox. Let me check if the cables are loose. That's not the case. That one is in there. All right, the cables are plugged in. So let's try to restart the Xbox. You know, this kind of stuff happens all the time because uh, you know we unplugged the monitor uh, before it was working properly, but Let after unplugging it and replugging it, we capture. sometimes have to re-add um, the capture into the software so you guys can see what the hell we are doing. But I think it should be okay now. Let's see. We're trying out a new capture card as well because we want to have capture and throughput because Jia also needs to see something on his monitor. So we're using an external one right now. Oh, weird. Let me read Did you break the Xbox? Okay. Let's see if we have fixed it.
the day where everything just runs smoothly would be so <laughs> appreciated. Maybe I need to reboot the capture card if the throughput is not working. Let me quickly try. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it, it's uh, the issue with the capture card because you're not getting the signal, I'm not getting the signal. Uh, let me think, it's plugged in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Maybe we should call James again to see if he uh, <laughs> <laughs> can help out. Let me quickly re-add the capture card. Ah, yes, uh, it's working okay. now. So it it's was uh, the problem with the capture card. Okay. I have visual. Then let me reactivate <laughs> this. And I'll just wait for you guys to see the capture as well. Yep, there, there we, we go. Oh, oh, that's yeah. too big. 4K, okay, better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're back. <laughs> so yeah, this thing actually runs a lot smoother than I thought. It's really quick, swift. And the controller feels surprisingly well, because actually before this I've only had uh, PlayStation controllers in my hand. But I have to say this Xbox Series 1 controller is fits actually quite comfortable in my palm. I think the I Xbox layout is palm. so much more comfortable than the PlayStation layout, in my opinion. I, I don't like the fact from the PlayStation layout that the analog ones are next to each other. I want the left analog stick to be top left instead of... Um, bottom left, basically. Yeah. And actually, uh, in the Xbox, they have quite the uh, n a nice little feature, which is this quick menu in which they allow you to switch between apps and games that are actually running as well. So you just have to press the Xbox side on your controller, and this will this just pops up, and everything just works quite uh, fluently. So it's quite nice. But uh, we are going to play some Halo. You know, guys, the last time I've played an FPS with a controller was about uh, eight years ago, I think. And um, please do not expect anything from this. I have warned you. <laughs> and if you don't want to uh, <laughs> become it's nauseous... It's time to laugh, guys. <laughs> if you don't want to be nauseous, uh, I also ex uh, yeah, recommend you to look away. Okay, uh-oh, we have found a game. Anyone already tried out uh, Halo Infinite? It's actually quite a nice game. It really has the, the, the nostalgia factor uh, from you know back in the days when Halo uh, first launched. And Neo Links to later on, we will play some Dying Light 2 on the PC. Yeah, then first we'll really get into the 4K Halo. performance and how everything uh, fits together. And yeah, the visuals, they are impeccable. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Hey, I already have the first kill. <laughs> Did not expect that. And <laughs> your first death. Can you guys like play <laughs> FPS on the controller? I, I mean, the, I the thumbstick is so difficult. I'm either looking at the sky or at the ground, but I, I cannot properly aim with the controller. I, I really like controllers for, for games like Rocket League, racing games, stuff like that. But I cannot play shooters with the controller. I just can't. <laughs> it's also hard to throw grenades since you're not really aiming properly. <laughs> the enemy has captured Where are they at? And really, you not know, to my surprise, I, it's actually quite hard for me to tell that I'm actually playing on a console right now on the 4K resolution. And the frame rate seems to be really high. Yeah, 4K 120, uh, it's, it's, it's no joke. <laughs> you 
So of course then you of course right guys if you have this kind of mod, uh, uh, consoles you know you got to make sure you're getting everything out of it and uh, if you look for 4K monitor make sure that the monitor like the MPG 321 UR QD can actually handle HDMI 2.1 and get you the frame rate at 4K. Uh, so uh, 120 FPS at 4K. Uh, I got sandwiched. <laughs> Two, one. Oh, actually, Enemy I'm not attack. doing that bad. Charlie, Wait, how do I? Okay. Alpha is one for uh, one for three. Okay, that's actually pretty bad. <laughs> Never mind. I see you. <laughs> how is he still not dead? Oh, he is. Got clapped from behind. Enemy team scoring. I think next time uh, we'll arrange two controllers so uh, you know Mikhil can also show off his skills. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see me play a shooter with a controller in no. the I'm, I'm already making a laughing stock out of myself, so you know at least you can <laughs> help me with it. <laughs> It's like it's like you're watching a new playing a FPS game for the first time. That's that's at least how it's, how it looks like to me. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely not a monitor fault. So uh, oh, that was that wasn't half bad. Who's shooting at me? So in the past you have played shooters on a controller, right? Yeah, it's, it's like eight years ago, I believe it was like uh, Black Ops 2 or something. And uh, I even grinded all the, the gold weapons. So, uh, uh, so at least you have some experience playing shooters with a controller. Yeah, back in the days. I, I really don't know where I got the patience from that back in the days. But if I have to do this right now, uh, I'm going to run out of patience really quick. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's okay if they stick in like a straight line. Then it's fine because you don't have to move around that much with the joystick. But uh, as long as you know they start jumping around, you know you, you're you're effed. I see a question from Armin it's asking: Is it a true 10-bit panel or 8-bit plus, eight bit plus uh, FRC? It's 8-bit plus FRC. But uh, it's actually you know it, the capability of the 8-bit plus FRC is actually quite remarkable. Uh, you're still getting like this kind of uh, fidelity uh, as you would get with, from a 10-bit panel, but it saves you the cost. You can see it, it's, it's almost like you can compare this with like a uh, Nvidia uh, G-Sync competitive or a native G-Sync. You know, you're still getting the benefit out of it, but you know, for less the cost. But of course, the original one is always going to be better. But um, it's it's not like different in such a, um, a capacity that you're going to notice uh, a true difference. Stronghold Charlie lost. Enemy team scoring. Power items inbound. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. It's also a bit what your main goal is. Like if you do a lot of content creation, for example, on a professional level, and a bit of gaming on the side, then you may want to go for a 10-bit one. Where is this guy? If you mostly going? game and do content creation on the side, then I would say 8-bit plus um, FRC is perfectly fine. <sighs> you died again. A marathon with him. <laughs> then I got backstabbed. Come on, yeah, everyone's here. To see you kick ass in this game. I have to say, a four for five, it's only oh, a six for five. I have a positive uh, kill KD ratio. <laughs> you do? Yeah, six kills, five death. <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing it, but I guess uh, it's it's the Xbox power that I'm getting right now. I spoke too soon. Uh, look at look at look <laughs> at this. Bro. Look at this. Uh, All right, it's time for melee. Go smack him. Smack! Smack! Hope smash! <laughs> <laughs> I think I caught him by surprise. Hello. How did he not die? In Quake, if you kill someone with melee, you hear the humiliation sound. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Just really rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> 
Stronghold Alpha is ours. Your team scored. I mean, yeah, personally, so far the experience of uh, you know the combination of the Xbox Series X and the uh, MPG 321C uh, UK. Uh, just, Jesus, I can't play the game and focus at the same time. Uh, the URQD, it's it's quite a formidable couple actually. Really enjoying the the, the the clarity that you're getting from the 4K, and still, um, you know, the benefit from the HDMI 2.1 with 4K and the max 120 FPS out of the console. Which is, of course, like a few years ago, is like unspeakable if you're uh, talking about this kind of combination. But right now, yeah, it's I'm really digging it. So you can, you know, invest, you know, quite a lot of money in a good monitor, and uh, you know, you don't have to spend all that much money to have a uh, capable system, which is, I guess, one of the uh, unique benefits from uh, consoles. But then, you know, make sure you have a capable monitor that can handle its performance. He wants to clap me. Ah. He did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Clap me real hard, mid-air. So is this a bit like Battlefield, that you have to capture certain points? Yeah, it's, it's like uh, domination. You just basically dominating uh, ABC so right. every time you dominate this it turns blue and then the opponents have to get this back yeah you need to hold it basically yeah so you have to choose man are you going to go for more territory or are you going to defend the territories you have always running gun <laughs> but yeah there you have it I already lost you know this is how quick you can switch games you just press uh, the Xbox button on the controller you go to uh, something different and uh, yeah it's all of the uh, quick access stuff you can uh, get from this quick menu, which is really a delight. You can look up new stuff, go to the store. You completed the daily challenge. So of course, if you have uh, the Xbox uh, as well, then you can also uh, try to activate the Game Pass on the Xbox as well. Then you really have the ultimate combination trending games minecraft yeah you don't like minecraft <laughs> uh i really don't get the point of minecraft i mean it's like lego in a video game <laughs> yeah but why would you want to play lego in a video game i can be cool i can imagine i think if oh. i if it Elden existed Ring. when i was a kid i'm sure i would have liked it yeah okay yes then i can imagine yeah, they have tons of stuff in the App Store that you can just access quite uh, easily. So, um, content, definitely enough. You want to watch movie and stuff, also there. It's, uh, yeah, quite a versatile machine. And um, the performance, it's it's definitely what I not what I expected. So, uh, so obviously, this is the first time I'm actually using a uh, Xbox Series X. Yeah. Really not bad at all. Very satisfying. But how and about PC gaming? Yes, so now uh, let's see uh, what kind of performance we're talking about when you play 4K and you know having, uh, for example, Dying Light getting maxed out visually, how that's going to look. Okay. Uh, so let me switch the source. Go. Power Burner says men are still kids, just older and the toys get more expensive. For sure. <laughs> uh, long loading screens. It's also a very ugly loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> Tagland might be watching. <laughs> We're just kidding. Just around. some feedback. <laughs> so the menu looked pretty promising, you know, 150 FPS. But uh, let's see what happens in the uh, in game. But of course, guys, this is like literally one of the newest games right now, which is visually really impressive. So obviously, the more impressive, you know, the harder it is for your uh, system or for your GPU to render. 
and yeah right now it's not looking all that colorful <laughs> i'm running about 60 fps depending on you know what kind of scenes you're looking at what kind of scenarios what are your settings right now yeah and then we'll show you what kind of setting i'm actually running at if you're maxing out at 3090 <laughs> it's got to be high Wait, 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 the options, yes, yes, yes. Where is, oh yeah, above. Full screen, uh, we're playing on 4K Ultra HD and let's see, b -b 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 advanced in here. We are also using DirectX 12 ultimate with uh, ray tracing and a uh, few to few it's normal uh, high is here pretty much the ultra version so you cannot go higher than high uh, I hate motion blur so this one obviously is off basically uh, everything is uh, on uh, ray tracing every single aspect and also the quality uh, everything set to max and this is what makes it extremely heavy like <laughs> yeah. ultra HD resolution in combination with ray tracing that's quite hefty. So let's see, uh, you know, what kind of difference this is going to go. Probably have to restart the game. Wait, I'm, I'm still using ray tracing. Shouldn't be. Do 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 do. Advanced. All right, you went back. I think you need to apply. Yeah, there's no apply, so. Um, not here either. Let's see. Game needs to turn to. Uh, what am I was going to effect. Nope. <laughs> Do I really okay, have to manually disable those? Fine. Particle. I have okay, sh contact shadow quality, ambient occlusion quality. None. just set this to high without ray tracing high without ray tracing see if I need to restart you still have ray traced flashlights by the way yeah but I don't have flashlights yeah but you so don't have DirectX 12 so it shouldn't show ah ex expected much I think that's a very good moment to do another giveaway whoop whoop so if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Um, if you have already signed up, no need to do anything because you will automatically be included in the next drawings as well. And if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link um, that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. And our next winner for one of the X Xbox Game Passes is nickname is new gaming rig congratulations <laughs> is that a hint <laughs> is that a statement or is that a request at least you did win one of the xbox game passes so congratulations new gaming rig you also won one of the codes so please for all winners keep an eye out in your mailbox then ja will email you the code in the coming days Uh, let me just make sure my uh, oh, monitor is set to the highest refresh rate. That's a good thing. Now oh, we're still switching resolution, I think. Okay, just a sec. As the Rockman said, try lowering the ray tracing. Yeah, indeed, Jai is lowering it right now. Okay. All right, so I'm sitting at max refresh rate, 144 hertz, so that's good. Spooky2000 says, ew, ray tracing. <laughs> I think ray tracing itself is cool, but yeah, the performance hit is, is big. Well, 55 plus, when uh, your FPS just shut up by like 100%. And uh, yeah, the game actually still looks bang on. <laughs> Except for, uh, you know, so the, the obviously okay, the this, illumination this is level. Some different, especially the light is yeah, a lot different. It's a less, uh, we'll say, realistic in that sense. Yeah. So 
Uh, yes, like we said, you know, you gotta play around with uh, the settings. You gotta see, you know, which one do you uh, prefer? Uh, prefer no, no, no. Do you prefer? Um, which ones do you um, uh, really want to have the best quality? And some other ones, you know, that you don't really care about. You can basically just, uh, yeah, try to tune it down. Armin says, I love these streams. You guys do a good job of showing the capabilities of these monitors. Definitely consider getting one. Thanks for the compliment. Appreciate it. Uh, Kilo Kite is saying, hey, I'm going to ask for your opinion. Ultra wide or a normal 16 by 9 monitor? That's a difficult one because for me, it's very much dependent on what I want to do. Like personally, on my computer at home, um, I would use 16 by 9, but that's because I mainly play competitive games. And I think um, I think they just are easier to play on a 16 by 9 monitor because it's easier to get everything in one side. I don't have to turn my head. Uh, but for example, if you if you want to have like the more immersive kind of games, or if you want to uh, build a racing simulator kind of game, I would say for racing games, definitely an ultra wide is beneficial. Um, so yeah, it really really depends on what you want to do. For for more immersion and for for racing sims, flying sims, hands down ultra wide. Um, for more competitive games, your Rocket League, Valorant, Counter Strike. Uh, all those kind of games, I would personally stick with uh, a regular 16 by 9. So it depends on what you what you do most on your PC. It's so actually look at this. <laughs> Even though uh, ray tracing is actually turned off, you're still getting some benefit. <laughs> if you look at the reflections. <laughs> yeah. It's a massive game, actually. And uh, a while ago, if you missed out, that's really uh, a shame for you because uh, we were like distributing dying like game codes, like you know, Oprah. And um, <laughs> this and is actually quite code. an amazing game. A game. <laughs> yeah. Karakite says, I agree. My eyes, spend this big world. my eyes hurt playing with an ultra wide monitor, but I found a solution. Move your monitor further away from you. Yeah, to a certain extent, of course, you can do that, but that's very much dependent on how big your desk is as well. Um, like on my desk at home, I cannot move my monitor very far away and I also cannot get a bigger desk because I, it won't fit in the room where I have my game PC. So yeah, it depends, depends a bit on your situation, but definitely if you have a bigger monitor, putting it away further from you will make it easier to have everything in, into one side basically. Ooh, let's see, a uh, hard statue. Yep, she's not giving in. <laughs> Wait, where, where, where's the stat? Did it crash? It was showing just a second ago. What are you missing? The stats. Oh, the afterburner. Yeah, it was showing just a second ago, but uh, hmm, strange. it's gone. Uh, Neuravex is asking, is there a specific release date for this monitor? Um, specific? Well, <laughs> not really specific because right now it's already in logistics uh, process. So if you're living in the US, you should be expecting the monitor, uh, at least the Xbox edition, within uh, the coming two uh, weeks. So and basically the, the, the product world, has been launched, but it, it depends yes. per region when it arrives. So, uh, and the rest of the world, uh, uh, it's gonna take about three to four weeks uh, where you can get this monitor, the Xbox uh, certified edition. Um, yeah, guys, uh, if you have any more questions regarding this, uh, let us know. Otherwise, you know, if you uh, just, you have to remember, if you get this kind of monitors, it's awesome. You get the performance that you want, and especially if you have a console like an Xbox Series X, this is all certified uh, with it. It's integrated with uh, its best gaming features, and, um, you know, you're making sure you're getting the most out of the monitor's capabilities with uh, consoles as well, and if you're PC gamer, you know, you got to make sure that your hardware is able to handle 4K gaming at a reasonable FPS. 
Otherwise, you know, uh, even with playing around with settings, if you're not getting it, you know, keep in mind that, okay, if that's still fine, you can use the monitor as a good investment for the future for when you do upgrade. But you gotta make sure that your hardware, uh, you know, they match each other eventually, performance-wise. Otherwise, you're losing out on the value that you're paying for, for the monitor. Um, yeah, guys, if you have any more questions, uh, let us know. Otherwise, uh, I think we are going to uh, give you the surprise of what we're going to do next week. Yeah. And we're whoa, whoa, whoa. before we do Don't that, you can already see it in the top corner, of course. But I'm going to draw one more winner for today. Awesome. Who is the last winner for today? The moment of truth. It's actually, we should have arranged some more codes for us as well. You know, it's like one month of free gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got plenty of ga games on our corporate accounts. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> so we're spoiled. Congratulations, Ethan32. You won our last Xbox Game Pass code for today. Awesome. So to all winners, congratulations. And uh, keep an eye on your mailbox. Then Ja will supply you with your prizes. For next week, um, and I hope I can do this because all the components are still on the way here. And I hope they arrive in time. Um, but I'm going to do a build with some very nice new white computer components. So I've got a completely white case, a white power supply, a white liquid cooler. I'm going to use our uh, Z690 uh, Force motherboard with the cool, very uh, light heat sinks on it. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a very light build. Sounds so very clean. Will there be RGB or is that a surprise? Yeah, there will be some RGB. <laughs> all right. Maybe I, maybe I also set it to white. <laughs> so I hope to see all of you guys again next week. Uh, same place, same time. And uh, thank you for yeah. joining today. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, guys. And, uh, and stay safe. Um, and see you next week. Bye-bye. Goodbye.